going on everybody welcome to another episode of the vile files i am your host nick joined by the team ali amanda and chrissy <laughs> you guys doing great awesome amazing awesome absolutely Magic. great so nice and wonderful to hear well we have a great episode for you today uh jeff beecher and the wonderful kelly osborne join us today and we have a really just fun conversation about uh, life, obviously dating. We, uh, we we talked a little bit about feminism and chivalry and whether they can coexist. I'm really curious about this topic lately. I'm curious about some of your thoughts. Let us know what you guys think uh, about it, and maybe we'll have some more dialogue in, in the future. But uh, it's a really interesting topic these days as uh, we continue to kind of discuss uh, the roles that we play in relationships in, in life. And uh, yeah, so just a fun conversation with Kelly and Jeff. And we also uh, talked to Kelly about uh, her her relapse, uh, her weight loss, and just really everything that she's been so honest and vulnerable about. And uh, we get more information and, and a, a deeper dive into, into that. And, and we thank Kelly for that. Talk about addiction and uh, just a, a really great, informative, and also fun episode with both Kelly and Jeff. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. And if nothing else, let's get going. Jeff, Kelly, uh, thank you so much for joining me. I'm so excited to talk with you guys today. Hi, thank you for having us. Yeah, we're super excited to be here. You can tell by how pumped he is. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, I wanted to actually open up by thanking you for kind of the life I have because I'm a big believer in the butterfly effect for people who uh, have affect your life. And I, this was it's way dates way back. But do you remember Kyle McCullough? You know Kyle McCullough, short guy, used to yeah, watch. Some, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So he, you introduced him to the Bachelorette. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay and and way back when after caitlin bristow season i was at Lollapalooza, and mm -hmm. kyle's now one of my best friends right but oh my god that's awesome at Lollapalooza, he like saw me he stopped me and he was going through a breakup and he wanted to make his ex-girlfriend jealous and he recognized me and she knew she was a fan of the show so we like we took a picture together and then proceeded to hang out all weekend long now he's one of my best friends we hang out and had he had you not introduced him to the show he wouldn't have stopped me and it wasn't be, and it was because uh, I moved out to LA, lived with Kyle, and if I had never moved out to LA, That's I would never have gone back on the show and become the podcast and host this podcast, uh, become the Bachelor, host this podcast, and be talking to you today. So thank you, <laughs> Kelly Osborne. Oh my God, I Kelly really love that story. Friends. Did he tell you about? I think he was there that night when I got so excited about something that was happening on the show that. I, I like went like, yeah, like that. And I ended up punching a cupboard and breaking a finger. Of course you did. He, yeah. He, he did tell me, cause that was the season where they made a big deal about Caitlin and I hooking up mid season. Uh -huh. And Kyle was just like, and apparently he told me the story how a lot of people were like, oh my God, what's going on? And they're like, is, is this normal? And they were like, this never happens on the show. I don't, so I don't know if that was it, but he did not mention that you, uh, you uh, punched the, the ceiling or the wall. But. Yeah, no, it was like, it was like a very intense episode. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, thank you for uh, <laughs> for so much because it's, it's kind of funny. Like all these things, there's so many things that play out, right, in life. Isn't it weird how many degrees of separation there are to human beings in this world? Oh, totally, right? And there's like none anymore. I know, it, it is crazy. And uh, if that moment didn't happen, there's not a doubt in my mind that I, I don't move to LA, I don't quit my job, I don't go back on the show, I don't become the oh, Bachelor. Oh, because he would have never recognized you. Yeah, and, and I- wouldn't have lived with him. And I wouldn't have moved to LA because Kyle, like he, he became friends and like I signed with an agent and he was like, no, you gotta move out. And I'm like, I'm like, 
I have my condo here. He's like, just, I have a room to stay with me. And like, <laughs> and he was a big catalyst. And if it weren't for, for that introduction and he would have never That's seen the awesome. show if it weren't for you. So thanks. You're so welcome. Please tell him I said hello. I will. He says hi. Does she get a percentage or no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No. <laughs> He's like, no. Anywho. Uh, yeah. So you guys, uh, uh, congratulations on your new podcast that, that's launching. And I know a big part of your podcast is just kind of telling your stories and, and being vulnerable with uh, the things that you guys experience in your life. And I thought we'd just uh, spend some time today kind of talking about, you know, some of those topics that you, you guys are passionate about and just kind of talk about the, the world and what's out there and, and, and have some fun, fun along the way. Awesome. Sounds good. Uh, Kelly, you are obviously been really open. Can I just tell you something? Yeah. I fucking love being in interviews with Jeff because Jeff is new to interviews and he has an interview voice and it's my favorite thing ever. He's like, sounds good. Yeah. I love it. No. <laughs> okay, it's not, it's not an interview voice. It's, it is an interview voice. It's me, it's me trying to sound awake voice, but it's all right. All right are you uh, not a morning person, Jeff? No, no, I am. It's just it was a late night. Oh, well, that's <laughs> what did not, you do? I did nothing. The, I did whose nothing. earrings are that in the bathroom then? Don't worry about it. We'll talk there about we it. go. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it when I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I went to the Dodger game. That was fun. But it, it went... that, Are you in L.A. right now? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Awesome. Is, uh, it, was, is the Dodger Stadium cool? The way it was great. It I mean, now? it's like 20 percent capacity. And so like you, you have these small groups and it's there. So there's, you know, it was actually, I mean, it was great because less traffic, you got in right away, you got out right away. And, you know, it was just fun to feel the energy of, of a crowd. You always catch everything. I know. <laughs> he's laughing because of, <laughs> he's like, I can't believe you're making fun of my interview voice. <laughs> no, the earrings. Like, how do you, oh. the, like you just catch everything. It's I'm washing my hands. I, Jeff, you're my best friend. You we know pretty much live in well. each other's houses. And I'm going to wash my hands. And I look down and I'm like, whose earrings are these? Oh. Like, oh, Jeff's had a lady friend over. <laughs> <laughs> hop, hop. So yeah, a great night, man. Yeah. Would you like me to go get the earrings so you can see them? Stop, stop. <laughs> you know, uh, nah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Um, Kelly, obviously you've been recently in the news being so honest and vulnerable about, about uh, uh, coming clean and your relapse that you've had. Um, yeah, obviously not easy to do, not easy to talk about. <laughs> Maybe it was fun until it wasn't fun. It always starts out fun. <laughs> and then you're just like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Is it like, what did I do? Uh, I, you know, to be totally honest with you, it's what our first podcast is all about. And because we had to go in and we record our first podcast because of this happening. And I just want to be as honest as possible about it. Um, it's, it's all part of addiction. It, you know, you're the addict inside of your brain. It's, it's crazy. And it works in the most insane ways. And my brain was telling me, Oh my God, like, everything in your life is great right now. You're normal, like you're fixed. You can go back to drinking normally and you can have fun. That was not the case. No. It's never gonna be the case. And what, honestly, what made me stop was I wasn't drinking for fun anymore and I got really drunk at my, it, boyfriend the guy I'm seeing at house and he the way he looked at me it was like you are disgusting and in that moment I felt disgusting and I was like nope I'm done and I woke up the next day and I called everyone and I told everyone and I put out that post and I am back in therapy because I stopped using my tools. I stopped going to meetings. I stopped calling my sponsor. I stopped participating. I stopped showing up. I came up with excuses for why I'm better than my alcoholism. And I, I'm not even joking you like, poor Jeff. <laughs> He had to deal with it. Well, she, she had to deal with me for decades oh my God. being a psychotic animal. So, it's, it's, you know, it all evens out. And so... A, co a couple of weeks isn't that bad. Yeah. 
it was like literally a matter of days that I was out, but it, it, um, it didn't take long. Cause once you stop, you never drink the same way again. Yeah, no, it's uh, I, I a question for you. I have friends, various degrees, right? And some of them, you know, they, we've had conversations where they, they kind of like it, between them and I will be like, ah, I'm not sure if I have a problem. You know, I'm not sure yeah. if I, I use too much. Oh, I'm very sure. Yeah. But I wonder, like, they're, they're scared. There seems to be this, like, they can recognize that, but then they don't know what to do or where to go or, or what people are going to say. You know, they'll tell me because... Yeah, okay, I'll tell you why, because there's so much shame yeah. associated with addiction, whether it's food addiction, sex addiction, love addiction, drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. It, it's a... It's, shameful like you like you walk i'll tell you this i walked around for two weeks filled with shame and you're just getting you spiral and you don't know how to get out of that spiral and the only way you can do it is by getting honest and holding yourself accountable and and, and that's like a beautiful thing about treatment and programs and 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 all of that is that we get to you get to be vulnerable again and you have to allow yourself to go through that but What's great is that you're not alone when you walk into the rooms. You're not alone because every single person in that room is suffering from the same thing that you are. There are places that you can go for help and they don't cost anything. It's not, you don't have to pay to go. It's, and I've met some incredible people that have really helped me. And like I said, it, I think the world in general needs to start being a bit more accountable. And it, it's one of the reasons why I love being an alcoholic because I get introduced to things like the program that does hold me accountable and does make me a better person. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have that. Yeah. And for the, and you say the sh shame and that's, that's what my friends have expressed and it's been over the years, different situations, but like, is there other than in that, that was great that you shared that, like, is there any other advice or just kind of a, an inspirational additional inspiration for the fear they have of going to family and friends and saying, I'm an alcoholic or I have a problem. It's the first step. And, and people think that because you are this, that you're, it's like you're broken, that you're not good enough, that it, it's, it's what you have is an ism mm -hmm. and your brain works differently. And we feel so much deeper and it's, it's a, it's a lot to carry. And that's why when things get too heavy and too intense and too crazy, we check out. Mm -hmm. Or if you're like me, when things get too good in your life, you're like, I don't deserve this. I'm gonna go and fuck my life up. That's the kind of person I am. And I was, and luckily I caught myself this time. You do that too. You're like the worst for that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm laughing because we had this talk like a couple months ago. I'm like, everything's perfect. Everything's like, literally, we were both like, we were sat here like, all we have to do is not drink. Not in my, my case, not gamble, you know, not take pills and we're good. Stay, stay healthy, work out and we're good. Literally two weeks later, he's on, can I be honest? Yeah, I had leg surgery, you gotta give the details. Okay, he had leg surgery, so he was in a lot of pain. And then no, I had leg surgery and I had an infection in my leg. Ooh. And I had a nurse if living I here for a, a month. fucking word infection one more time out of your mouth, I swear to God, I'm gonna stab my eyeballs out. Why? Because that's all I've heard. I have an infection. I don't an have infection. it anymore. It's gone. Jeez. It had an infection. It was. Anyway, bad. it was a lot of pain. It was like a couple inch deep, like almost died, you know, the whole nine. Yeah, that's not gone. good. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of pain. I, I empathize so with he you. He was Jeff. on pills. Yeah. And then I started drinking. And we both were like, <laughs> what the fuck are we doing? No, and here, in, in, it wasn't that great. And Kelly, like, sat me down and she was like, look, I just, you know, yeah, you needed the pain pills, but you don't need them anymore. And, like, I love you. And, you need to get off of them and I just can't be around you and you're on them. I'm like, holy shit. Like she's right. Like I got to get off these things. And I just stopped taking them. And he did like amazing. And then I don't know what, literally it was like, I don't know what happened. Nothing. I just was like, okay, I'm going to drink now. Cause I'm normal. I'm fixed. Very few things are more enjoyable than uh, taking care of your gut health and quenching your thirst. What a yeah. great combination. <laughs> Very few things. Very few things. And Huzzah is doing both wonderfully. 
It's such a uh, thirst-quenching beverage. Uh, my favorite flavor is raspberry lemonade. There's also strawberry hibiscus. There's juicy pear. All very delicious. And at the same time, you're getting a probiotic in your stomach to help your gut health. And taking care of your gut health is so important. Uh, increases your immune system. Uh, it helps your digestive system. It just helps you feel better. It can improve your skin. All these things just because you're taking care of your gut health and staying hydrated with huzzah. Everything's more fun when you feel your best. That's right. And that's why Huzzah adds probiotics to its seltzer to help support your healthy gut. Tasty and exhilarating when chilled, but non-perishable so you can store at room temperature. Experience bold flavors that pair perfectly with a picnic or backyard hang. Again, my favorite, raspberry lemon. It's tangy fruitness and a crisp spark of zero sugar and just five calories. But they have a lot of great other, uh, they have other flavors that are wonderful, low in sugar, high in health. Get your cooler ready and stock up at Huzzah Probiotic Seltzer by using code V-I-A-L-L for 20% off your order at drinkhuzzah.com. That's code V-I-A-L-L for 20% off at drink, H-U-Z-Z-A-H.com. As you guys know, my, uh, or may or not know, my lovely girlfriend is in the healthcare industry. She's a surgical tech and uh, wears scrubs to work every day. I can tell you her favorite scrubs are figs and not because they are a sponsor of the show. Before I met her, she was rocking the figs. I personally like them to wear around the house and then as I say, look smart in public because people think <laughs> of a doctor and that is amazing. But the important thing is, is that they are great for the healthcare worker industry and Supporting our healthcare workers has never been more important for all the great things they do in our communities. Figs makes modern scrubs with a focus on design, function, and comfort. It's got pockets, it's function, and it's stylish. And our healthcare workers like to look and feel good, so let's help them out. If you are one of the awesome humans who work in healthcare, Figs wants you to wear the scrubs you deserve and enjoy 15% off your first order. And if you're not working on the front lines, thank someone who is with the best scrubs in the world. Figs will give you 15% off too. Use code VIALL15 at checkout. Head to wearfigs.com. That's W-E-A-R-F-I-G-S.com and enter code VIALL15 at checkout. I, that's, that's awesome. You guys are there to support each other and hold each other accountable. And, and um, cause yeah, I, I, from hearing from a lot of friends, I see the fear and the, the shame and, and the fear of judgment from people. And, um, Dad, and I tell you something, you know. because of what I've been through, I'm so non-judgmental of other people. Yeah. You have to do something so shitty for me to turn around and be judgmental of you. Like, cause I always try and put myself in the other person's shoes before I, you know, you don't know what anyone else is going through. Yeah, no, it, that's 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 well said. The best thing you can ever tell any friend that is going through something like that is call, go online and look up AA and find a meeting near you and go in and raise your hand and just say your name and that you're scared and you don't know what to do. And about a thousand people will come up to you and tell you what to do and help you and you leave feeling like you have some hope. Yeah, for sure. What does your sweatshirt say? Sorry, I'm right. Yeah, it's merch on my. Uh, we 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 talk. We do a lot of relationship and dating advice on this uh, podcast, and it's just uh, something I sometimes. Are you say. in a relationship? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Give us some dating advice. Well, does Jeff need <laughs> advice on what to do with the earrings now that they've been left oh, behind, yes! or the meaning of those the earrings left behind? <laughs> so why just, they were left just, behind? Just because just a heads up, I help you out. just just a heads up, my I have kind of this kind of snarky, honest approach that my audience appreciates, but sometimes it's a it's a, it stings sometimes. So it's I, you blunt, know. but it's honest. <laughs> yeah. But wait, so, so where do we find these sorry I'm right uh, uh, sweatshirts? I, I, if you really want them, we can send you some. It comes in tie dye as Please, well. Please, you know, you, you no, I, I, I want to buy it. I like supporting everybody. So where, where, where do I get? Uh, it? It's on the filefiles dot com. <laughs> we, we are happy to send. <laughs> we are happy to send. <laughs> so you, so we, are you unclear about where you stand with the uh, earrings? No, no, the earrings are very clear. Great, very clear. great. <laughs> oh, <laughs> doesn't need my advice. Look at that smile. Talk about it another time. Oh my god, <laughs> that's great! Um, Back to the merch. You can get our merch uh, if you go to our social media. We don't have any merch. Kelly, merch exchange. Kelly we don't. We don't have any at, fucking at merch. Jeff Beecher. <laughs> great. Yeah. And then follow, he, follow he's link, just going to start writing a shirt that bio. says, "I'm a douche." 
Kelly, that is so, <laughs> so Beecher 2008. Relax, relax. I was You guys douche. are so brother and sister. I, thank you. Thank you so much. I was a douche. Yeah, that reformed, actually probably would be good merch. Reformed douche. Yeah, reformed douche. You know? Reformed douche. That's going to be our merch. first merch. We're going to send you that sweatshirt so you can wear it. Reformed douche. I mean, I, I, I think <laughs> it works. It tracks. <laughs> I, I think every guy is capable of wearing a, a t-shirt or sweatshirt that says reform douche. It's, it's self-aware. Oh, 100%. And There's, so is every girl. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of women too. Yeah. For sure. I, I was talking recently with one of my friends. Like when I was a kid, I was ruthless. I didn't give a shit what the guy felt like or thought. Or I, I, I was like, bye. Like I remember being like, okay, you can leave now. Savage. Like, didn't like I was I just didn't give a shit and then all of a sudden like I find myself in a relationship now where I'm like oh fuck I actually really care about how my actions affect this person so I'm gonna like not fuck this one up so I got a question for you it's something I've been interested in just in general we we you know this uh my audience is about 90 percent women uh, we're we're very pro feminist on this show. I consider myself to be a feminist. Uh, I also like to be chivalrous with my girlfriend. And you see, kind of out there, and kind of the discussions of feminism and this debate. We like to think that on this podcast, that two things can be true at the same time, even if you think there's kind of a contradiction. And I'm wondering these days, can chivalry and feminism coexist? Right. Or there's a lot of people out there will say, well, is it okay if, if you support feminism and women empowerment that you could open doors or be the one who pays for the first uh, date on a meal? Like, where do you guys, do you have any opinions on that or where you stand? Because I, I have like a lot of friends where there's a discussion there where my girlfriend considers herself a feminist, but like likes when I, you know, the other day we were walking down the Jeff's street. like, I am not answering this question. Come on, Jeff. Um, <laughs> Let's have some fun. No, but like, like you no, know, okay, for example, so like, it, there's a fine line, yeah, yeah. I think. And it, it's like, I am old fashioned. I like it when a guy does things like that because to me it shows that they're taking that extra step to show me that they care. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if a guy opens a door for me, I'm not going to be like, I could open a fucking door. <laughs> like I'm like, that's not, a, I, I actually, I'm like, Oh my God, you opened the door for me. But oh my God, I am sense. also one of those people that when it comes to paying, like it, we switch off. Yeah. I do one. He does one. It's not like, He's the guy he has to pay every time. I don't agree with that at all. I think that it's it's very nice when they do that, uh, but I'm also one of those people that's like, I like to pay my own way. And I also enjoy taking care of him as well. So, and vice versa. Yeah, I was the other day, I was we, my girlfriend and I were walking down the street and I was on the outside of the street and she, no, I was on the inside of the close to the wall. She was close to the street and she was like, you're supposed to swap. You're supposed to swap. I should be on the outside to yeah. kind of uh, anything kind of in a protective role. And I was just like, I never thought about that. Thanks for letting me know. And yet like she very much considers herself a feminist. I very much love that she uh, like is very hardworking, has her own job, like takes pride in the things that she does, that she wants to take care of herself. And it's just kind of an interesting kind of juxtaposition of of having those two uh, independent thoughts. And I'm it just is, kind of it curious is, it how- It is a balance, you know, but yeah. I think that that's the new art of love and war, if you know what I'm saying. Totally. Because, and, and it's, all, it's all individual to the person, I would say as well, because I mean, I have some friends that absolutely believe that the man has to pay for everything. And I'm always like, what the shit is wrong with you? <laughs> like, get it together. Like, have something of your own. Do those like, don't same you want something that is yours? Yeah. Do those same friends consider themselves feminists? Yes. They do. Wow. And I don't. And, and then I'm like. Mm. And is that wrong? I don't know. I mean, can you still want the traditional chivalry and. Because, like, isn't feminism just believing that men and equal are equal and capable of, yes, and have so the treat, same rights? So treat it. Yeah. So treat. So, but that—that's not you being a feminist, then, because you're not being equal. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But then how does Sorry, that... Com- that's, that's my belief on it. Because yeah. and, and, you're not being equal. Like, if you want everything to be equal, then be equal. But what but about also, what about my girlfriend you, saying, if, stand on the outside? You know, stand, you know. That's just saying that she's in the medical field. So if you get hit by a car, she can help you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you that's go true. down first. <laughs> You know, but they like clearly, my girlfriend can open her own car door or an open a door. She she's more than capable. But car like, doors, I mean, she likes course, that I do like, that. Yeah, yeah, no, I like I do too because it's it's those little tiny things. It's the little things. Girls are sticklers. Boys never look at the little things. And the one thing that I always tell girls: don't drop hints to men because whatever you're dropping, they ain't fucking picking up. <laughs> and you're just getting you're getting frustrated and wondering why he's not getting the hint because that's not the way that men think you just have to it's say t- to the point yes do this what it is that is upsetting you how it makes you feel let him say what he's gonna say and then you move on if you sit there and be like i'm fine i'm fine and he's asking you what's wrong and you're not saying then you're just being an idiot I mean- like men men are not Men are very deep, but they're not as, like, we put things in boxes and all different shelves and we can, like, pull shit from nowhere and we've made up conversations that we haven't had with you and we're suddenly pissed off because you are late again. You know what I'm saying? When we could have just said, hey, it would really mean a lot to me if you just are on time this time because we can't be late this time. And if you just say that- She clearly has late issues. Oh, same. Me. I'm with. Oh, wait. So wait, you, you're you're late. I know. Or I'm you... always on time. I thank don't you, like Kelly. When people are late. It drives me insane. I. <laughs> no, thank you. That's it's the, really feel. It's one of the it most in, me insane. It's it's one of the few things in life we have control over, and it's one of the most inconsiderate things you can do. And it's not it's, necessarily. Thank you. It says to me that you don't care about my yeah, time because and, you're late. Like you can be late. Shit happens. Traffic happens. But it's the it's it's the people who are like on my way and they're like getting out of the shower right so meanwhile you're like well they're 15 yeah. minutes out right have you and- met jeff <laughs> this is jeff beecher Je- this is what he does and i stand on the fucking street for about 25 minutes because he said he's two minutes away i'm on but- my way I have, I have old classic cars that take a long time to drive down the hill <laughs> okay did you just did you just drop did you just pick up what he dropped he just wanted yeah. to let everybody yeah. know that he has fancy classic cars would yeah. you like to let them know what kind of cars you have no i didn't say i didn't say that it said it takes a long time to drive down the hill then get on sunset and it's a whole do you like mm-hmm. do it with jay leno do you guys like get together and like drive down the jay hill leno together? actually helped me get my car <laughs> yeah he's my neighbor <laughs> i wish i go car shopping with jay leno <laughs> yeah yeah i just went on google <laughs> and typed in car they're like yeah, i guess i'll get this one <laughs> Each and every, I woke up today, f- took a shower, and put each and every on my body. What is each and every, you ask? Well, if you haven't paid attention, it is a natural deodorant that is not filled with all the crap that other deodorants have on the market. So, like myself, who was allergic to aluminum and had to avoid wearing deodorant for all my life and was forced to wear antiperspirant, which is even more toxic, I don't have to do that anymore because I get to wear each and every. I don't. Also, aesthetic bonus, I don't have. The deodorant stains on my shirts every time yeah, I put on a t-shirt. It's what, so good. Even what though it's a white. win. What a win. I feel healthier, safer when I just want to smell good. Each and every worry-free formula is made without irritating ingredients like baking soda or aluminum. Instead, it's made with clean, safe ingredients like coconut oil, dead sea salt, and scents come from essential oils. And don't forget that I have an amazing scent to choose from with the new limited edition white chamomile and bergamot scents is perfect for spring days. And each and every has been found to fight odor as well as antiperspirants without aluminum. I can verify that. I, I'm a sweater. I work out every day and everyone tells me I smell delightful. Trust us, you're going to want to make each and every your new go-to. So order today. We've uh, got a great offer for our listeners. For a limited time only, get 30% off your first purchase. Go to eachandevery.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use promo code V-I-A-L-L 30. That's V-I-A-L-L 30 at eachandevery.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Don't forget, 30% off with promo code V-I-A-L-L 30. Well, I don't know if you guys know this, but I am a recent new homeowner. I Yep, that is right. And ensuring the things that are important to me is very important. My home, my car. And, you know, there's so many options out there and I don't know if I'm uh, spending too much or, you know, and wasting money on things I I don't need all while still trying to protect myself. And I'll tell you what, The Zebra is the nation's leading insurance comparison site for car and home insurance in minutes. You can compare policies from every major provider for free. 
all on one independent marketplace. Wow, what a time saver. After a few quick questions, The Zebra pairs people with the right insurance company for them, helping everyone save time and money. Buy online or over the phone with one of their licensed insurance agents. There are no hidden fees or fine print about your personal information. Best of all, The Zebra has no stake in the policy you choose. They're just there to help you find the coverage that's right for you. Make insurance your smartest purchase yet. Visit thezebra.com slash V-I-A-L. That's T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. Are you you're a big car guy, Jeff? Yeah, we cars. both are. Um, huh? I have a 1957 Bella Chevy. Ooh. And right now, uh, do you work on Eric, cars? Yeah. So this is okay. This is a project. A side. I, I, I do not work in cars. A side project that I've been working on. What my mission is to learn how to fix an engine myself. We need to and introduce I, her to Constance. So m- my. Uh, Eric, who is the guy that I date, he and I are coming to up with like this idea to do this. I don't know the, where we're going to place it, but the whole idea is it's like a challenge game show where he sets me a challenge of having to fix a certain part of a car and I have to figure it out myself. And if I can't figure it out, then I have to do the thing that I don't want to do. And through the process of trial and error, I actually learn how to rebuild an engine, but it's always good. Like I want to start with a classic truck and we're just trying to figure out which truck first but i used to know how to change my oil uh, on a car and then like technology happened and now it feels like it's impossible like a 57 like an older car i can do mm-hmm. but that's it that's all i can do is put washer fluid in my car and maybe change my oil and put a flat uh, uh, change i think tire. i could change a battery i could probably change the oil but that's about it at this point gotcha Oh wait! Oh, but, oh, one more question. How do you feel about uh, Kelly? You're you're in a car with Eric. You guys are on your way to dinner. Uh-huh. Pull over for gas. Uh-huh. Should Eric always pump the gas? Yeah, I'm not touching that thing. Ah, uh, is that? I think whoever's driving should pump the gas. So, feminists, two feminist men and women are in a car. It's the women's car. This is, see, this has got nothing to do with being a feminist. Okay, first of all, I drive a Tesla. I'm just wondering. So that's, that, this, I'm... this thing never happens. But um, <laughs> Who's actually, pumping the gas? If I'm in my car, I'm pumping the gas. If he's in his yeah. car, he's pumping the gas. Okay. The dri- I think that's it. The driver. The, the driver, driver yeah. should pump the gas. Like, I don't, that, but the whole thing is I got an electric car because I don't like I think there's a lot of people listening like who, are are like, who, who are like, I'm not pumping that gas. Get out. Pump the gas. Jeff looks like he has an opinion. Je- yeah, come on, Jeff. <laughs> no, no, I, I like the I like the whoever's driving pumps the gas. I agree. I like that one. It's pouring rain. It's hailing. The rain's going sideways. It's windy. Who pumps the gas? Am I on a call for work? Oh my god, you would still make her <laughs> no, do it. I know you're you both did. you're both hands free. Who's no, then pump- I would do it. I would definitely do it. I'm just wondering, like, where does Shiva? I don't know. Honestly, I don't know if Eric would even let me if I wanted to. It's, it's, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I do. And yeah, like, you know what I mean? I, even if I was like, no, I'll do it. Because I, I don't, like, I'll be honest with you, stuff like that, I don't care. I'm like, I'll get my hands dirty kind of girl. I Like, I am not, like, I have a broken nail. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, it's not, it's a, are you laughing at me? No, I love you so much. She's enjoying, like, with you, not at down and i'm like yeah me too <laughs> like i'm like i just like i don't give a shit like i'm human i'm not perfect like and i will here's something that girls need to know i used to be and i don't know what happened i think it was covid that changed this for me i used to get so much like oh he likes this if he doesn't like this mm. guys don't like that guys like a girl who knows who she is what she wants and is confident in herself like i have i don't worry about anything that he does ever because the first thing he ever said to me was, um, if, a, if a guy likes you, if a guy doesn't like you, you will be confused. Mm-hmm. If a guy likes you, you won't be. Are you confused? And I said, no. And he goes, okay, then. And I was like, great. That's all I needed to know. Like, I'm easy like that. But, and I've ne- I never have that thing where I think, who is he with? Do I need to be there? Like I have my own shit. Do you he think, does his own shit. Do women, is it, can men 
operate the same way or or if a of a woman likes a guy should he safely assume that if i'm not confused she likes me but if i am confused she doesn't i think it works both ways yeah, yeah. i agree i really do yeah i did i think it works both ways for for men and women did earrings leave her earrings on purpose jeff or yes or yes. no she knew we had, we had a tight schedule today so it's just right now is that why you were up at like seven and you said, oh, I left the door unlocked and blah, 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 blah. I was like, how the fuck is he awake and going back to bed again? I can't tell I mean, if he's was, stretching really sincerely or it's a flex. Yeah, I, it's a, no, he's, it's a flex because, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, uh, look at me. Yeah, uh, totally. <laughs> to leave the earrings to come back later like to the, get them. The, the left arm is like foreplay. I'm going to get the this earrings. This was like... <laughs> Oh, this will be fun. You can judge the kind of girl by the earring. Oh, can we? Oh, can so you... much so. So much so. You can judge well, a girl because by Because if it's like a real. Tiffany diamond earring, that's one thing. If it's like a dream catcher earring, that's another thing. The simple, sweet little earrings. Yeah. Elegant, but not overstated. We stop. I'm not. We're not right now. What is it? I know who these belong to. Okay. What is the earring, though? It's, oh, it's a nice little diamond classy. That looks like a classy girl earring. Yeah. Yes, it was very classy. It's a classy yeah. woman right there. Good yeah. good, good for you, Jeff. Thank yeah. You. Classy. I mean, if it had like a bunch of bedazzled oh, jewels on it for a one night. Go. I keep like turning my head and mouthing different girls' names to him to try and figure out like which one it is. <laughs> She's classy, but yet she knows how to party on a Thursday night. No, we didn't party. It was just chill. Well, it sounds like you guys partied. Together. No, I was really, I was, I had, I had a very bad, I had a bad uh, financial crypto thing. That, that oh, happened what, 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 what happened? I'm in the Ethereum market. Just so that we're aware of Hold this. Hold on, let me get I, ready to talk about crypto. I no, I, I have a lot. Spend. I have a lot of Ethereum. There was one, I had one account that was that was leveraged, and when uh, our whole but, lives revolve around whether Jeff is doing well on crypto or the stock market no, it was just or whatever one, anyway, it is, it was because our week can get thrown away that got, over that got, this. That got stopped out because of uh, the Biden tax leak. Remember what it just doubled last night, a couple hundred points. Oh, that didn't that didn't help my one account. So whatever, it's all good. You know what? It'll bounce back, you know. Exactly. It was down for a it while. Bounce, it bounced back already. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Uh, it's the classy girl with the classy earrings. Kelly, another thing you've She's been a classy broad. Yeah, Kelly, another thing you've been open about is weight loss, right? And and both of us. Bo oh, really? You too, Jeff. Body positivity. I, mean, I lost like two hundred and sixty pounds. Yeah, he lost way more than I did. Oh. He lost. Like we did this together. Like Jeff used to be a very, very, very angry larger man. Very angry, except for he was never angry at me, but he was angry at everyone else. You look great. And Thank you. Thank he, I don't want to tell your story for you, but go on. I know. Yeah, it was about 440 and uh, lost 260 ish. Maybe right now I'm 240 ish, 250 ish. And like he, but we both, we both were like hot messes, if you know what I mean, but not even hot, just like, fugly messes <laughs> that were angry and sweaty and fat and so we <laughs> I, was, I was known as the fat brad pitt in vegas so i'm just putting that out there i mean listen i personally would take anything that included brad pitt yeah yeah not like like everything the yeah. fat brad pitt okay um, so <laughs> nick, nick sometimes the first nick sometimes calls him what did you say the walmart ryan reynolds i don't call myself i've been told <laughs> i've been told that uh, but what I, I wanted to ask you guys um you know we talk a lot about positive body positivity on the show where do you like how, like and again this it's kind of a the climate is you know love yourself everyone's respected their own feelings but you know and so big small whatever you know love yourself and we support that but how do you have a conversation with say someone uh about body positivity while simultaneously having a conversation about health and wellness, right? And where because do you draw the you line? You have to start yeah. with mental health first. Okay. That's where, like, that's something that, that yeah, we that's both like, learned. Like, 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 people always ask, like, what, what was your diet? How did you lose 260 pounds? And how I lost 260 pounds was I fixed my head. Yeah, yeah, that's what we did first. Like, I did 
two years of straight therapy. Like I went every single day for one year. Like even on the weekends, I signed myself up for this intense thing. And then I, um, as this, when I got into the second year, it lessened and I just went once a week, but it's, I couldn't have done it unless I had fixed my head first because I know so many people that go into doing what we did. Jeff and I both did surgery. We got the gastric sleeve. And I'll tell you, if you don't go into it with the right headspace and sober, it won't work. Because yeah, because if you don't is, change your diet, you'll just if you, gain if you weight. you don't change everything, everything, your outlook on everything. Yeah, like, it, I, I lost 120 pounds before we got the surgery. Okay. And then I got the surgery. So, like, you, yeah, you like kind of develop like those good like, habits. Uh, yeah. When people ask me for like advice and they're like just so obese and just so out of control, sometimes you just have to get the surgery. The surgery, what the surgery does, it gives you like a year, two years of your stomach like reset. Then you have to go fix your head or you can fix your head first, then get the surgery. So, but one thing you cannot do is drink when you get this surgery because what it does is it, uh, first of all, alcohol is completely different in your body now. I used to be able to drink so much, can't do that anymore. I've learned. Um, it's scary. And, um, it, what happens is it relaxes your stomach and your stomach will stretch and then you will eat more and you will gain weight. And it is, it's only like, I would never recommend this surgery to anybody who doesn't want to make a life change mm -hmm. because otherwise it's pointless and you're just wasting your money. You're throwing it in the trash because you're just going to go back to where you were. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. You talk about how you Jeff how you kind of made like making the changes before the surgery right because I think people often confuse self-love right and taking care of yourself like sometimes uh you know you know critics you know people who are in shape or whatever or consider themselves and they you know will might fat shame or things like that right and and they'll be critical of someone and someone says well I love how I look I love who I am and then people will start arguing about those type of dynamics and and just taking care of yourself uh, and, you know, having good habits, whether it's diet and drinking and mental health uh, can, you know, are important all while if you do want to lose weight. And it's interesting because I think people seem to fight about that stuff a lot in terms of difference between self-love and, and, and wellness. I think that, that it, all of it is about balance all, and all of it, again, is about honesty. You've got to be honest with yourself about where you are and what it is you really want. Like, and why you want it. Like, I wanted to do this for me. I have friends that did it because they wanted guys to like them. Like, that was, I never went and did any of this for anyone other than myself. And that is so important because if you're not doing it for yourself, you will never succeed. It's like all the other, it's all the other things like, well, it, they won't like me if I don't look like this and I won't get a job if I'm not skinny. And I'll tell you this, when I was fat, Hollywood did not look at me at all. They were like, nope, we're not using her. It's, it's just how the industry goes. But I didn't care about that. I wanted to figure out why the fuck well, I hated Vegas myself so much. Vegas was me when I was fat. Well, you're not a girl. I know what I'm saying. It's a lot different as a girl. It's a lot different. Do you yeah. think that there's a double standard? Oh my god. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> yes. There's such a double standard. Even if you're trying to get into a club, myself as a bigger girl standing next to somebody who is not, that girl is going to get into a club way faster in a line than I am. Mm -hmm. 100%. It's true. Something that it's simple. Yeah. And when you put it like that, you see how like grotesque society is. And yeah, it's awful. like, like I did terrible things in my life, but I got way more shit for being fat than the things that I did that were terrible. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with people? Why do they care so much about my fat ass? Like, and it wasn't until like, I was like, I want to do this for me. I want to feel good about me and I want to make myself happy. So I made myself happy and then I lost weight. And then Kelly and I also started a foundation where we pay for stomach surgeries for people that can't afford it. Oh, wow. How do you guys go about kind of allocating that money? I mean, go, knowing how much you talked about like doing the steps before the surgery, is that part of kind of the qualification process? Yeah, we're, we're setting it all up now because we launched we, it in the middle of Corona. So. so yeah, it's not in the middle of Corona. So nothing is like happening 
as fast as we wanted to. Like by now we were hoping that we would have a ward and a plaque on it with like the Kelly and Jeff Institute of Weight Loss, you know, <laughs> but it, it's not happened just yet. But for, for us, it's, we're both like the definition of white privilege. Like we can get this surgery. We can pay for this surgery. We want to make sure that people who don't have insurance that want to make this change and want a better life Wait, can afford this the, surgery the record, too. I'm Nicaraguan. Oh, oh, sorry. I forget you're a Nicaraguan but still white privilege. And so we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to get this surgery because it is life-changing. It's so life-changing. And it's important to us that we can give back what, what we got from it. That's that's awesome. Uh, before we wrap it up and, and play uh, our, our favorite game with our, our guests, uh, you, you, you know, we've talked a little bit about COVID and, uh, I think as we come out of COVID, people have kind of learned to appreciate different things. What are things that you're going to, what What have you learned about yourself through like quarantine? What are you going to miss about quarantine? Or, or And what are some of the things you guys are most excited to get back to as the world slowly gets back to normal? What? Je- at- okay, okay, just so you're aware, Jeff and I during quarantine were complete and utter fucking psychos. We had conspiracy theories up the yin yang. No, you this, had conspiracy theories. You I, had no. conspiracy theories no, too. No, and then I you would OCD. yell at me and be like, my OCD, my OCD can't handle it. And then you would start telling me about your conspiracy theories. And then we would go on these hikes and I'd be like, don't touch me, don't fucking touch me. And he'd be like, don't touch me. What? And then he'd all have right, this right. glove in I'm his gonna, hand. I'm gonna just, wait, <laughs> this I'm glove just in stop, his hand. Stop, I'm gonna sum it up. You ever see uh, Aviator with Leo DiCaprio? Yes. Yes. When Howard used like locked himself in the house and like peed in cans. Yes. Yeah, and peed in the jars. That yeah. was you guys. Yeah, like literally, like yeah. And then people were like, oh, oh, like, you were scared of Corona. I'm like, no, no, I wasn't scared of Corona. I had a mental breakdown. But like, like, like I, but you should have seen our knuckles. Like they were raw from how much we were washing them, and like anytime anyone like spraying everything, and if any, we saw anybody walking their dog across the street, I'd light or spray the air. Like it was like insane. Yeah, so I'm happy that's over. I think our favorite one was like we went for a hike and then, then we <laughs> saw these like army fighter jets and I was like, see, they're surveying the area because everyone's gonna die and it's gonna be a zombie apocalypse. We've got to figure out where they land because that's the army base and that's where we should go. <laughs> and I was like freaking out. <laughs> have you always been a conspiracy theorist, Kelly? Or no. is it Joel? I have, yeah. No. Completely. <laughs> what what are some other <laughs> Conspiracy. Aliens are among us. Just so well, you're aware. That, does that make you a conspiracy theorist by believing in aliens? Among us. It so, depends on the degree of alienism. I think that you believe they are among us. Men in Black is watched, a documentary. I've watched news since April of last year. Let's put it, leave it at that. I think. Well, yeah. that, I think that's smart. Um, so, it, Kelly, true, true or false? Men in Black is a science fiction or a, uh, a like a real life documentary. I feel like it's based on reality. <laughs> E.T. E. Not science. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly also thinks The Matrix is a documentary. Yes. No, like, how do we not know that we are living in an alternative universe? How do we not know that there is a parallel universe to this? We don't. Who is the uh, astrophysicist, Neil Tyson deGrasse? There, yeah, 80% yeah. of the world is dark matter that we know nothing about, he says. Exactly. Not only that, but he- We don't even know about the ocean and we live here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> e- either, either we are at the beginning of a simulation or we're at the end of the simulation. Yeah. One of the two. Don't even get me started on my whole like alien thing. Like, and- I'll bring Egypt into it, and then and then right, is it possible? Ancient and aliens. Like, She's into the are, ancient aliens. Is it possible oh, you're yeah. an alien and you don't know it? I've wondered that, yeah. <laughs> but no. I feel like if I was an alien, I could fix my problems better. You know what I'm saying? Well, maybe. I've got, I've got too much human shit going on in me. So I I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. If we we you would have to be too advanced to. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like. You'd be like, that's that assuming aliens like, are that more advanced. Me. Well, yeah. Of course they're going to be. That's a safe assumption. <laughs> human no, evolution. Yeah. If they're here in human bodies, they've had to figure out some shit to do that. How do we not know that coronavirus isn't aliens? Well, Kelly, we we don't. We don't. See? <laughs> <laughs> well, Kelly, we, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right? I don't 
I don't know. <laughs> Either way, we wear, wear a mask. <laughs> 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 yeah. aliens uh they they are owners of mask companies and they're <laughs> um what are some things you're looking for other than getting out and not peeing in jars what are what are the things that you are <laughs> most looking forward to once things get back to normal i don't know it's like i've learned to appreciate time in a whole new way and patience and i think that we it, it, the nice part of it is that it's taught us all kind of just to slow down a little bit and we don't need everything instantly. You're not going to die if it doesn't happen in that moment. We've learned that in the last year. And I think that it, it turned people one way or the other. You either went completely crazy or you embraced it and you changed and it's made you a better person. But I do think at, at one point, every single person has lost their mind during coronavirus. It's been too much change. The yeah. human nature can't even handle it i i would like to see uh handshakes abolished for good thank you me too there's no need for it don't uh, touch me i don't need to touch you we're good it's like japan they just bow to each other it's fine acknowledgement yeah. that's all you need yeah thank you i don't this whole handshake it's just like i don't know if you wash your hands or what rails you've been touching and even though corona uh might you and know, you be totally look like the kind of man that's gonna like scratch your balls and sn sniff your fingers so like don't touch my hands thanks that's how i feel yeah. not you i was just saying in general yeah not, way. not the walmart ryan reynolds yeah. <laughs> well <laughs> walmart you know i mean not dissing walmart great value reasonable prices um yeah i don't i don't see the point of handshakes i don't understand let me take my whole day of decisions and wrap it up and give it to you in the form of a handshake <laughs> It's like, fuck you. The, the thing is, as well, is that like, have you not noticed that human beings still find the need to touch each other? So now it's like elbow bump, fist bump. I'm like, I don't want to touch you. I'm fine with an I'm elbow start bump. start bowing. I like that. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. But if you start namaste we're done. <laughs> we're done. So the bow without words. I'm, so bow without words. I don't even mind like a, a hug, a hug for like, you know, people I know. I don't want to hug a stranger, but like, yeah, that's the thing. Like randomly meeting strangers and 99% of them, I'm never going to talk or see to again. And they come up to you and they're like, I'm but, a hugger. And they stick out their hand <laughs> immediately like, hey. Yeah. It's so true. <laughs> I'm a hugger. I'm I not. Hug. You're like, I'm like, well, I'm not. I'm You're not. Good. Yeah. And because I'm so short, when people hug me, I'm the height of everybody's like where my neck is always goes where the armpit is. So I get like <laughs> hot armpit on my neck, like wet armpit. And you're like, oh, don't. It's gross. Oh, it's gross. And then when they tell you you're a hug, they're a hugger, you're like, feel like you're forced to hug. Or yeah. you could respond with, I'm a head butter. Like, why do you have to make me feel like a dick? Because I don't want to yeah. embrace you or shake your hand. Well, I think we all came up with a good solution. That this this is the, like, the, like Japan. Yeah. I want to yeah. start doing that and just see what people say. Just, maybe just yeah. the head. Maybe just the head nod. Because so all we, all we require is acknowledgement. <laughs> like, I'm going to go to Georgia. I can't see Nick. I'm going to start around, like, bowing pe to people. No, I grew up. Nod. I grew up doing like a Japanese method of piano. And so I would have to bow to my teacher at the end of every one of my lessons. And there was nothing weirder than like bowing to a white woman in suburban Minnesota and being like, thanks That's for the lesson. So funny. Like, <laughs> I learned a lot. Thanks. Bye. That's actually really funny. Do you, do you still do it, Ellie? I, I mean, she would teach, I was like five and she'd be like, you have to bow longer. Like say hippopotamus in your mind while you're bowing and then come back Shut up. I was like, up. this is the- Say hippopotamus. <laughs> I would have been like, fuck off. What's this game that we're about to play? Oh, you are gonna love it. Nice little segue. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, it's called, Do You Know Me? Should we talk about your sweatshirt one more time to plug merch? Yeah, thank you. Ready? Is it great? Did we get it again? Vilefiles.com. <laughs> I love Maybe. the way you giggle every time you don't want to promote your own shit. It's really cute. <laughs> Maybe well, Jeff needs the, uh, it's from the earring girl. It's not love, it's toxic stimulation one. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. It's love. We're good. Uh, yeah. It? Look at that smile. Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh. oh. 
Yeah. As soon as we get off this call, you yeah. guys, he, I'm going to be like, tell me everything. He, <laughs> he can't wait to call her and be like, how are you doing? I'm just thinking about you, babe. Thinking about you, babe. All right. Are you guys ready to play? It's, my vile files. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's called Do You Know Me? It's real simple. Uh, I'm going to okay. ask questions. Does Jeff and Kelly this? Has Jeff and Kelly ever done this? Don't answer right uh -huh. away. The uh, one, two, three, four of us are going to guess, right? We're going to okay. guess, and then you answer yes or no. If you have an anecdotal story to explain your answer, you're welcome to share it. You're also not required to. Uh, but we are going to guess if we know you. Okay, let's go. Do you know me with Jeff and Kelly? Question number one. Real simple. Does... Jeff and Kelly believe in zodiac signs. Does Jeff and Kelly believe in zodiac signs? And I mean, like, believe. Like, they know their sun and moon rising. How co-star. Oh, like Ricky Williams believes? Yeah, they believe it. They, they, they use it as a guide as to a decisions they make in life. Uh, not Jeff. Not Jeff. Yep. <laughs> not Jeff. I feel like Kelly has to because of the whole conspiracy theories of like aliens. She had to fill her time somehow in quarantine. I feel like Kelly has one friend who's really into it. And so Kelly's adjacent to it. She's been in and out of it. Yeah, absolutely. She's like, she's dabbled. Yeah. Not like it's running her life answer? into it. Yeah, yeah, we're ready. I have one friend that's really, really, really into it. And so I've gotten into it. I have one friend that knows like everything, like everything and can tell me all, all about it. But I will say I do. I am one of those people that does feel like my star sign. If that makes sense. Like when you read about it and like, yeah, but I'm not one of those people that's like, Oh, it's a Scorpio thing. Like I don't blame <laughs> or like my, I don't blame like my, <laughs> all right, what, that's cause you're like a Libra. Failings in life yeah. on my star sign. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you weren't you know I mean? a Pisces, you wouldn't have done that to me. Exactly. I, I will say when you talk to someone who knows their shit, like Ricky Williams, you understand astrology in a more useful way rather than that kind of a Cosmo way about yeah. it. Like there's an actual practical application for it. First question was a softball. We're going to heat it up a little bit with question number two. Has Jeff or Kelly ever been injured during sex? Yes. Has Jeff 100%. Or Kelly? Yes. <laughs> just by his reaction. Jeff. Yes. <laughs> Kelly. Kelly, yes, as well. Kelly has left scratch marks on the back before. So she's injured. I don't know if she's been injured. I guess they're like guess. falling off of something or something falling over and hitting her. I'm going to say yes for both. <laughs> I'll say yes for both. Uh, no, I'll tell you, I got a black eye once during sex because I was trying to be sexy and I did like a head flick straight into the guy's fucking skull and it gave me the biggest black eye I have ever had and I had to hire somebody that does prosthetic makeup because I was in the middle of a book tour to come and cover Holy my shit. black eye because That's it was amazing. so bad. And then um, with the guy that I'm currently seeing, uh, the first time we hooked up, I fell off the bed and hit my shin on the wooden post and fractured it and couldn't really walk. Oh, that's first, like the most painful. Like, the shin? You have oh. no idea. The bruise lasted. It was probably, and it spread from my knee to where my ankle bent, yeah. the front of my foot. Not a lot of blood flow down there. Yeah. So you're not to use that word. And it was, it was so, I, I was just like, Note to self, don't try and be sexy, just be yourself, because every time you do, you get hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And Jeff? Jeff? Mine's very private. Can I please tell them? No. Please. No. No. Can we get oh, cliff like, notes? What did you injure? It is. It's not anymore. It very much is. All right. Do me. All right. Let's, yeah. let's compromise. Describe it in three words. Broke his dick. <laughs> That is three words. <laughs> I don't think it'd be that easy, but thank you. <laughs> oh my god, Jeff! I can't breathe. You're a generous lover. Thank you. <laughs> and it's even it, it sounds like everything's oh we've more healed up. Otherwise, they wouldn't have earrings. There you go. Yeah. <laughs>
Question number three. Can Jeff and Kelly name three Shakespeare plays? Yes. Yes. Kelly can. Uh, Jeff, sure. Yeah, I don't want to doubt Jeff. Go no, ahead. You can doubt me. It's fine. I think Jeff only knows <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. I didn't even know that was a Shakespeare play. <laughs> Kelly? Kelly, can you name? Let, let's hear. Let's hear. Uh, Midsummer's Night Dream, Romeo and Juliet, and um, Macbeth. Also, Taming of the Shrew, which Taming of the Shrew, there you go. Which is uh, what I, I recently learned because we recapped it on my Patreon that Ten Things I Hate About You is based off of. Yes, it is. I didn't. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Also, by the way, that movie holds up. Go back and watch it. It's good. That movie's amazing. Isn't She's the Man based on what, Twelfth Night? Yep. Ugh, classic. Mm. Question number four. Did Kelly... Uh, yeah, we're, we're in rehab. Um, let's see here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> that was so fucking funny. <laughs> uh, does Kelly or Jeff believe in God? Uh, mm -hmm. yes in some form they are they're they're i'm gonna say they're not atheists is l ron hubbard considered god <laughs> oh my wow god. wow okay okay i believe in god right. yes <laughs> i uh, do of course i believe i was I, of course I, believe. I was bar mitzvah oh good for you in nicaragua has uh, uh, just, yeah, just so we're all clear about the Nicaragua thing. Twenty three and me. I met my birth mother, and it turns out I'm Nicaraguan. Good for you. That's awesome. Question number. I forgot. Well, I lost count. Can Kelly and Jeff name all the oceans? No. No. <laughs> Come on. I can see their eyes. They're like trying to think of I'm them like... in their head. <laughs> I believe in you. Yeah. Give it a shot. <laughs> Caribbean. It's not an Pacific. ocean, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it's not, Caribbean isn't the ocean. It's a, there's the Pacific. Yeah. The Atlantic. There you go. Um, the Baltic. No. That's a it's sea. Like, <laughs> that's a sea. But isn't it, is the Dead Sea considered one of them? De no. It, it has sea in it, Kelly. The Dead Sea? It's still a sea. The answer is no. No. Uh, Indian Ocean. Ocean. Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean, okay. Arctic. The Pacific Ocean. Arctic the Atlantic Ocean. Indian. Yeah. I, can't, I don't fucking Antarctic, know. yeah. I All didn't right, even so no, like, that's graduate fine. high school. I would so. just like to say that Kelly's laugh is like bringing me to life because I get <laughs> my laugh is so loud. So this time, <laughs> the, this time the horrible. comment section can blow up a different way. <laughs> last question. Last question. And just before we do, I just want to thank you guys for being so fun. Uh, has Jeff and Kelly or Kelly and or ever dumped someone over the phone? Or text. I was going to say text should be considered phone. Yeah. Yeah. Of yes. <laughs> Heartless. Uh, <laughs> there is no hesitation. He's, a, no. he's the Las Vegas fat Brad Pitt. Of course he's done it. He's like, I'm a fucking savage. <laughs> Drop. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kelly's broken up with me over text. We're not even dating. Ever. Um, uh, Have you ever ghosted someone? Uh, okay. So Kelly's a, 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 a habitual ghoster. <laughs> It's okay. People think Kelly's I'm ghost. Kelly's middle name is ghost. Yeah, but I'll tell you this. <laughs> it's disappears. a universal ghost. It's not like a specific individual ghost. It's universal. You know, it's like I've been best friends in 20 years. She's disappeared for like a year at a clip sometimes. Like, so basically I get overwhelmed really I think easily. she created the word ghost. Yeah, maybe. And I get overwhelmed really easily. So when I'm around too many people in like a day, I need a day by myself. Cause it's just too much energy and too many people. And it's like, I just need like a day with my, cause I have ADHD as well. Like if you've not noticed, like I've been on my feet and like, I can't fucking sit still. I'm up at six every morning, whether I like it or not. Like it's just, I've got so much energy. So like every now and then, like I just need a minute like on my own. And it's, so it's a universal ghosting universal. Okay. You should see how many unread text messages I have and unread emails. It's crazy. Well, oh God. that's because get... your only fans are. You will get no judgment from me. It would actually be me eating. Because of your only fans. 
nobody wants to see that. People don't look at me and they're like, but she's they're not like, I'm not a sexy girl. I'm like the fun chick. Like it's not, it's not written in the cards for me. Yeah, you could be, be sexy fun and fun. Sometimes. No, Kelly's very underplaying her OnlyFans account. She's incredible. Well, <laughs> could you imagine? 30, my dad would she has 30, fucking kill followers. me. My dad would fucking kill me if I ever did something like that. Like kill me. <laughs> I put up a picture of me in a bikini, like a bikini top, and he was mad on my Instagram. I got a whole like, "What are you doing? This is not who you are." I'm like. Dad, I'm by a pool. All right, Ozzy. Oh, like, he, he doesn't like it at all. Yeah. Never has. No, but seriously, it's only it's only fans.com slash, Ke- slash Kelly Osborne. She's killing it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now. Way to make it fucking <laughs> uncomfortable, Jeff. Made it like end well, it on a douchey note. Oh, I thought we're supposed to promote the podcast and only yeah, right, uh, I won't talk about not reform fans. douche, <laughs> relapsed money. douche. Yeah. Relapse douche is now relapse douche. I'm we can my, both wear that one. I'm gonna go on my Instagram. I've been non douche for four years. <laughs> uh guys thank you so much for for being so much fun uh tell us where you can find well you can find your podcast wherever you can listen to podcasts but it drops march 4th i believe yeah may 4th may 4th may 4th <laughs> i'm like march we're going back that's like a cool little promo thing we should do well, may the fourth be with you like you know, i'll do star wars yeah you know. kelly is super into that Genius. idea yeah <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you do believe in aliens, and technically Star Wars are aliens, so you should be down. Uh, <laughs> I'm so listen, down. Listen, listen, Walmart, Ryan Reynolds, relax with the jokes over there, all right? <laughs> uh, guys, it's been a ton of fun. I really appreciate it. Um, also, where, where can they, you know, social, should we be following you guys on social media? Where can they find you? Um, at Kelly Osborne on all platforms except for TikTok, which we're going to be doing a whole episode on where I actually joined TikTok and they're going to show me how to do it. Kelly, but it's wild. It's been, you won't regret it. I literally, it's been like one of these things where like, I'm not doing it. You should do it. I, yeah, like, I said like, the same thing. I was like trying to feel like cool about not doing yeah. it, but now I feel like I'm missing out. Yeah, it's missing wild. Out. And, I, and I'm at Jeff Beecher across all platforms. It's a, are you what? Are on. you? I can't wait to see oh, your Kelly TikToks, Jeff. Sorry. Uh, yeah. thanks, thanks so much guys it's, it's been <laughs> a ton you. of fun uh, thanks for listening guys don't forget to send your questions at asknickacastmedia.com cast with a K and uh, sending your re- reviews check out Kelly and Jess podcast follow them on social and if nothing else we will see you back on Monday and you're, you're going to send us a sorry I'm right sweatshirt oh my god the, uh... you said you wanted to support them shut up Jeff bye guys we love you thank bye. you bye <laughs> <laughs> thank you Take care. Bye, guys.